Valentina, we are now, now inside um, the exhibition Salt Free Tears, a project that you created especially for the space of Structura Gallery. Can you tell us more about the title of the exhibition and the main concept? It's a, it's a particular title, Salt Free Tears. And it came really to the concept of the exhibition, because the main concept of the exhibition is how we can accept death in our daily life. But my point was not to use the words death, because after it became a, a common word. And I didn't want, I really want to give a suggestion of the concept of death. Mm -hmm. My main point is not to answer to the question, what is death? More of how we deal with it. Yes, exactly. You, you're just making a proposal, more or less, how we should accept death as yes. part of life, as a continuation of life, not as the opposite of life. And there is another point that, um, that you have in mind with this exhibition. It's um, actually the critique of our understanding of time, our concept of time. Yes. Do you want to say a little bit more about it? Yes, you know that I make a research in Germany last year. Uh, I had the chance to be a fellow of the Academy of Solitude mm -hmm. in Stuttgart. And I was selected exactly for a project uh, to research about our perception of time and arrive to the point that our absolute time doesn't exist. I mean, when I say absolute time, I refer to the time count by second, by minutes, yeah. hours. And uh, I really believe that in the future, I hope that in the future we leave this concept of absolute time valid for everybody to the machine. I, try to uh, make understand how it's important for our future society to give the chance to everybody to choose his time. Mm -hmm. As a natural kind of flow, not Absolutely. as a um, social construct. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. As not be imposed from uh, something behind us, but yeah. as to be chosen. Also, we can say that is scientifically that each one of us has a biological time inside of us, and each one so is different for a, that. A lot of your works are actually connected to um, a more sustainable idea of life, how we should reconnect to nature, how we should reconnect to ourselves. It's also a very f philosophical idea, um, how, how to how to deal with that, how to deal with time, how to get to know our nature better. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to speak uh, about the series of uh, sculptures called Altars, because they represent the idea of time also very interestingly, I think. You can see in them an Asian object, but also uh, they look very futuristic. So again, you create this kind of mixture between past and present. Um, about It's all about history as well, because um, the idea of the altars, um, you did a lot of research about mm -hmm. Asian traditions and how people um, in Asian times dealt with the idea of that. So you based, um, based on this research, you tried to create objects that are kind of reviving this tradition, but reinterpreting it um, for the society nowadays. Of course. Can you tell me more about the concept of time that is uh, embodied inside mm -hmm. these objects? You know that, Marina, uh, really for me it was important to work with sculpture and recreate objects that can be in our home, mm -hmm. in our daily life, and they speak about death. So I chose to make, of course, the tombs, but also the altars. Mm -hmm. Because in, uh, in our old time, previous time, uh, in each family we had uh, these altars uh, that can be connected also with the re religion, why not? Because, uh, but also connected of our past, our past generations. And so, but for me it was no sense to reproduce uh, what we had before. Something that existed already, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I really uh, make a research, of course, of the basic concept, of the basic line, I can say, aesthetically, of the previous altar. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I try to reformulate uh, with uh, 
my point of view. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that uh, this sensation of uh, uh, lost in time, which I, this altar doesn't speak, don't speak about uh, past or future. It really speaks about what we have now. Mm -hmm. And the present that we have now is a present uh, um, without any direction. Always in my works, I try to work uh, with uh, in de indeterminate lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, if you see in previous work, uh, I never, almost all my sculpture don't have an end. Yeah. Are always balancing between, uh, I can say, the material, of course, but with this uh, abstract way of looking our present. Mm -hmm. And that is really uh, thanks to the material. You have a very specific approach towards the material. As we had this conversation a couple of days ago with the students from the National Academy, you mentioned basically that you have two main concepts in mind um, in your sculptural work. The one is the al alchemy of the materials. Mm -hmm. I would love you to say a little bit more about it in a second. And um, the other one is um, to let go of everything that is uh, not essential for the work. So I would really love you to, to tell us a little bit more about it. Just a brief introduction from my side um, in terms of the alchemy, because it's very interesting. You see it in each and every object. Um, the stone on its own is a very cold and kind of dead material, but in your works it looks so alive and so warm due to the combination with other materials that you do. Sure. You, you combine it with wood, you combine it with glass, you combine it with uh, ceramics or with plaster, and this combination creates another interpretation of the material itself. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you um, tell us a little bit more about how you, how you work with this material and how you chose the stone as your main material? Mm -hmm. Where does the fascination with the stone come from? You know, I start really to, from uh, when I arrive here, I start to study stone sculpture mm -hmm. because for me, the stone as a particular is a really specific material. First of all, it's one uh, and sees the oldest materials that uh, our primitive society used for sculpturing. We have to remember that uh, arts came a long time ago. Yeah. And even if now we have a different concept of aesthetic, Really, we have to remember how is important our roots. And the, the stone can summarize uh, this eternal way of being. Many people told me that uh, stone can be very well connected with a death mm -hmm. material. But at the same time, it depends how you use it. Yeah. Like I really make a, a simple example. For example, in that sculpture, I choose it of course, to broken, to cut the stone. But at the same time, I want to keep the movement itself of the sculpture, because as I said before, the sculpture can continue to be alive mm -hmm. and that's to not to be static. At the same time, the ceramic, like the ceramic is a new material, I never used it before. But I was looking for, in this particular sculpture, a material that can be modeled very easily by me, mm -hmm. directly by my hands, because I do all ceramic for this series of sculpture I have done. And the ceramic gives this possibility to not be precise, not to be finished, and uh, I think it's very well connected with the stone. It also reassembles kind of a movement, sure. the ceramics, due to the way it was formed by you, by sure. your hands that with the stone was not possible to recreate because uh, we have to also respect the material. Yeah. We cannot push the material more than it can be. Yeah, and how about the glass? What's the function of the glass? You didn't choose it uh, <laughs> just like that. You had something in mind with it, no? Yeah, it's true <laughs> that I start to collect this glass since two years. Mm -hmm. And that was since a long time I was looking for how to use them, because I was so fascinated to this effect. Of the light. Yes. They stay in my studio, quiet, waiting for the right moment. 
the topic of time and how we perceive it uh, is also part of other projects that you have done. For example, the video work, The Divorce, is also based around the concept of, of time as a construct. As, um, so, so you speak again about finding the nature or flow of time for each and every one of us. Can you tell a little bit more about this project? That it will be a video installation that uh, I, will present, I will present for the first time next year, mm -hmm. in February, at the Goethe Institute. And they make it thanks to the support of Academia Solitude, mm -hmm. was the ending of my research. And I can see that it's a really uh, simple way to perceive in time, because I, I shoot different perception of time. That is the main core of the video. It's true that now uh, it will be, it will become a video installation. So I will recreate, uh, like in February for Goethe Institute, uh, uh, I can say I will use the media of the video to suggest to the audience uh, this perception of time. I cannot speak more because it's yeah. true that we don't have in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about time, um, past and history are a part of time and um, in your works you often also criticize the way we deal with history, with our history as a society. For example, in the sculptural series I Giganti, <laughs> you um, criticize the, um, the um, connection that we lose to our past, that we are constantly getting rid of the past, of the history, and starting anew without any base. Can sure. you say a little bit more about this concept? Because we also see a little bit, a little tiny bit of it also in this exhibition, of course. I Giganti was um, a big starting point of um, my research about time, I can say, because really I was so fascinated uh, about uh, um, our problem, our society problems, how to deal with the, our past. Because uh, I'm Italian, yeah. as you know, <laughs> and I'm living here since almost seven years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry also for Bulgaria and also for Italy, but uh, I really perceive uh, in our society a big problem with, uh, with history too. Mm -hmm. Uh, accept our history and uh, to, I can say, uh, use it. Because yeah. uh, the only way that we perceive history is, uh, unfortunately, is to delete the trust that uh, we have constructed. Why? Because we think that the future could uh, be better for us. But yeah. uh, if we don't have a base, where we are we going? if we don't really focalize our attention to the characteristic of our society. And uh, instead of only criticize that, uh, we could maybe research and pay more attention on it. Mm -hmm. I Giganti is a really, is a series of sculpture, make, and it's a site-specific project commissioned by the Italian Cultural Institute here in Sofia. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we know, the Italian Cultural Institute don't have a space for art, for exhibition, yeah. for presentation. They just have uh, an apartment, a big apartment for language courses. So when I was speaking with the director of the Cultural Institute, uh, my point was really to work with that space. And so uh, the furniture became the, the way how I can interact with this apartment. Yeah. Because we don't have to be sh shame to say, it's a, simply an apartment. So the furniture has, are inside, even if our sculpture, they cannot really be used mm -hmm. from the audience, are just part of the space. You just mentioned how obsessed our, our society currently is with the idea of the future and the idea of progress. We are constantly looking um, in the future, in, in this 
process of progressing, um, so um, I, I could not resist but speak about the book that is actually part of this exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, although it's a pure sculptural exhibition, you create, created an extra thing on top of it, a, a game book called The Blue Wave, which is exactly um, thematizing the idea of, of course, of that and how we deal with that but um, um, also the obsession with, uh, with future, mm -hmm. with progress. Mm -hmm. So with this book, you kind of try to um, ask the question, okay, stop, think about it. What your intuition says you in this particular moment, how should I... Uh, you, you described it a couple of days ago very beautifully. What happens in the last 20 minutes before you die? Yes. What are the decisions that happen in your head? Due to the progress, we keep delaying that. We keep uh, pretending as if it's not there. We uh, are now living in a society that completely wants to get rid of the idea of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, during your research about Asian times and how people um, um, thought about that, previously in, in uh, older traditions, um, you found another way of thinking of it uh, as a heroic thing. It's a heroic thing to die. A lot of cultures even celebrated that as the continuation of life, as the better version of life. Mm -hmm. So can you tell more about the book and how this idea is incorporated mm -hmm. in the game that you created? Mm -hmm. Because it is a game. <laughs> sure. No, it's totally. In fact, I want to specify that I'm not a writer. I'm yeah, really maybe a poet. <laughs> also, these words are very hard to accept for me because the book is part of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And then I will be very curious to know what it will be the life of the book after yeah. the exhibition. Because the sculpture, in a way, will not disappear, but will be... Uh, I don't they think will go the... their own way, exactly. each and every one of them, let's exactly. say. <laughs> but the book, which way? I will be very curious to know the life, the future life of the book. Mm -hmm. Because as you say, exactly, it's a game. And I, I, wrote, I was writing uh, this uh, book exactly, imagining uh, the last 20 minutes of life of a person. So we are in front of a uh, uh, simple decision to make, because the books, uh, each chapter make you in front of um, the decision of love, the decision where to go to take a coffee, where also to go to take a rest, and so, um, or to make uh, some meeting that can... Uh, Postpone that. Exactly. So it's really, um, each page is a, in each page you have to make a decision. Yeah. And that for me that was one of the main concepts of the, uh, a game book, or, or in general a game. The concept of game are three characteristics, mm -hmm. very important. The first one, it's exactly the, that, the participation. I mean, each one deliberately participate. The second one is like that you engage, you develop a mental exercise, physical exercise in a game. And the third characteristic of the concept of gaming is also the interaction between more person, more mm -hmm. subjects. And for me it was really important because thanks to the concept of gaming, I really think that the people can understand, I hope, easily the concept of death. And so accepting death in a daily life. Games are a way to train ourselves sure. for reality, to prepare us, ourselves for reality. That, that is also the reason why kids play so many games. Sure, to learn. Because that's how they develop tools to um, to, to deal with the reality. Yes, also Uzinga, John Uzinga, that is a really interesting anthropologist and the philosopher, mm -hmm. he explained very, explained very well that uh, our society starts from the concept of playing, mm -hmm. this interaction between people, and at the same time it is developing itself thanks to the concept of gaming. 
We are inside a sculptural exhibition, but we mentioned that there is a book that is part of the exhibition. We also mentioned your video work that you um, have been doing. You also do a lot of drawing. You also do a lot of site-specific installations, a lot of uh, installations and, and public spaces. So um, one can say that you are very multi-medial artist. So how, what is, what is media for you? How do you choose to write media for certain um, ideas that you have? And do you work, are they interconnected for you in some kind of way? The sculpture, the drawing, the video, the text, how do you work with all of them at the same time? Or how do you choose what to work with? Honestly, as you know, my background came from um, a university in Rome mm -hmm. that was very theoretical. You studied law, actually, first of all. First of all, law. That, uh, Which is I also said, very multi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it really was my base, I can say. Yeah. Thanks also to law, how I studied our society. And for me, it was one of the main points. I was interested in law exactly for that. Mm -hmm. And in parallel, I was studying photography. I was making a lot of reportage, traveling yeah. around uh, Europe in particular. But after that, I started the academy in Rome, and there was, um, I had the chance to meet a very good uh, historic uh, art history teacher that uh, teach me really the base of theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, history of art. Mm -hmm. After that, I went to France, and there in the La Ville Arson in yeah. Nice, that is an experiment art school because it's really, it's like a, a castle on the top of the hill in Nice, where the students um, developing, uh, I really can say, um, experimental way to uh, construct it, idea. Mm -hmm. So I was really focalizing my attention on the installation, I can say, because it's the uh, more immediately medium to express yourself. It's a temporary and at the same time really with no border. Yeah. And after that I came, I arrived here and I studied sculpture. And so uh, I can say that now I, um, I use all media because of that, because my background was uh, multi multifunctional yeah. and I found uh, uh, each of my experience was really interesting to me and I try to keep uh, the knowledge that I have uh, learned and I try to develop my way of thinking. But the common line, I really can say that since the beginning I start to make art is the space, my interest in uh, on to work with the space, all kinds of space, private, public. You just kind of guessed my next question, because speaking about site-specific installations, about uh, installations in public space, about land art, I couldn't uh, resist asking you how you actually work with the space and what role it plays in your work. You know that my thesis of my first degree in arts at the Academy of Rome that I developed during my study residency mm -hmm. in Villarson was called L'Espace en Friche mm -hmm. and uh, focalized really the attention on all the garden that are in our city that nobody yeah. see it. So, like are really this garden that nobody take care of them mm -hmm. so they grow, the nature grow up and um, I really found so important that even if um, uh, without uh, our work, the human uh, interview on in this space, the nature continues to live. And uh, for me, it was really interesting to keep this uh, attention to the space, even if in the next uh, works of art. And so I really try in all, by now, until now, in all my career, I really look for projects that give me the possibility to 
contribute to the space, of course, respecting uh, the structure of the space, but at the same time uh, making alive. And for me, that is the main point. We really, uh, I'm trusting always to space that have this possibility to developing itself, uh, thanks to a uh, site-specific work. And uh, I, I think about, uh, for example, one installation that is, was my first land art installation in Italy, Vita. Mm -hmm. Vita it means life, yeah. but it's much better, I think, the name Vita. And there was um, like a, a star on stone, made by stone, sorry. And that um, step by step, the water comes inside, and so can be useful also for the animal, for the environment around. Yeah. Or I can say, I speak about uh, an installation that made uh, during the Sofia Art Week 2020. That That's was, also a thing that I wanted to speak about. <laughs> that is really uh, give... Uh, the Energetica installation. Yes, Energetica that give... Uh, first of all, uh, with this installation, I want to show how Sofia in general, Bulgaria can offer a lot for public space. Exactly. That is really, because here in Sofia there is a, uh, really a big potential. Po po potential? Potential, merci. For in public art intervention. Yeah. And it was made on the Ministry of Energy, like on the facade. And, uh, it's an impermanent video installation actually happening on the wall of the ministry. Mm -hmm. That also that is amazing to work with a is a government building, yeah. and you see these murales <laughs> that uh, was just waiting for that I think <laughs> for this installation. Anyway, the space always in my uh, project is uh, the starting point. Mm -hmm that give me the, um, the suggestion in which direction to go, of mm -hmm. course, yes. And when I speak about space, of course, I speak about architecture, but at the same time, I speak also about the environment around this space, about people that leave the space, about the history of this space. There is a question that I always ask because each and every artist that we have the pleasure of work to, to work with uh, is very individual and different. So that's why I would love to ask you about your artistic process. How, mm -hmm. how, do, you, how do you start? Where does the idea come from? Because it, as you already said, you have a very multi-theoretical background and you are very interested in social topics and um, um, criticizing a general understanding of the society about basic concepts as space and time, for example, life and death, by not opposing them, but as, uh, criticizing the idea of this opposition and trying to, like with the materials, create an alchemy of all of them so that they, um, they become one. So I was interested to know where do your ideas come from mm -hmm. and what's the theoretical process behind creating a project and what's the artistic process behind it? I really believe that each artist has his own process to create, of creating, sorry. And uh, even if for me each project is different, uh, but I can say that, uh, yes, I write a lot, always. Mm -hmm. I love to write, and, but I keep this writing almost secret. Sometimes I read again my writing after a couple of years, three years. It's just um, conscious uh, uh, research, I can say. And another part, very important of the work, I think, is the drawing. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that is really well connected with sculpture. I always uh, uh, found the, uh, the good balance between materials, form, thanks to the drawings. Mm -hmm. Probably the other sculpture do another way, another, like, uh, thanks to the maquette. But uh, my, 
my main point, my main uh, exercise, daily exercise, is exactly the drawings. And as you know, until now I never show my drawings. Uh, speaking of drawings, I really would like to mention uh, your recent project at uh, Schloss Solitude in Stuttgart. You just had an exhibition there with a series of almost 100 drawings. Very different concept than the one, uh, than the one we see here. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the series contains a very detailed, orientated um, paintings. Mm -hmm. um, pencil. In, with pencil and in, in, in color. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to say a little bit more about the concept of this exhibition, maybe? Because it's like the complete opposite of that, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for this project, uh, in uh, this exhibition, Academy Solitude, uh, I w because first of all, uh, the title of the exhibition was Solidarity. Mm -hmm. And so I invent uh, like an installation of 100 drawings that represent the diversity of uh, uh, filled flower. Mm -hmm. So I try, I hope, um, the good way to express this the diversity of uh, the filled flowers thanks to an installation of 100 drawings spread in the space with, uh, without any logic. Yeah. And uh, each one is different, of course. So. Each one is very delicate. Almost when you enter in the space, you don't see them. You just see 100 pieces of paper on the wall. But you need to make an effort to get closer and to see them. Because I really chose also in this case uh, the material of thin paper mm -hmm. and very, very uh, light and soft color to draw the flowers. Because uh, are like the flowers and the felt flowers so delicate and at the same time, I, my point was really to reach the diversity. So in each drawing, there are like different kind of flowers all together. And so that express also for me a hope of a good society that can keep, I can say, the diversity, because each flower, for example, is different like us, but at the same time, each one collaborate, interact with the other one. They can survive just thanks to this collaboration of the other one, because in the uh, field flower, they survive and they reburn again thanks to maybe the neighbor. Yes. Because the neighbor <laughs> protect maybe a smaller flowers. It's a very, I think, a very basic uh, metaphor of, uh, of solidarity in uh, our yes. society. Yes. yes. Um, yeah, maybe a last question, Valentina. Mm -hmm. What is your next project? What shall we look forward to from your side? What's coming up? <laughs> By, like really the next year, we'll start with a long-term project because it will, uh, will be developing for the next two years. Uh, luckily, I was selected to develop a, an international project uh, supported from the European Union. Uh, we'll be with other artists from Croatia, from Austria. We'll speak about borders. And so all together, Mia will be, I think they represent uh, artists from Italy. We'll work on this concept uh, on the borders of North Italy that are forgetting borders. Even if I think that, uh, like in our society, we try to, to forget about uh, the diversity of each... Uh, Culture. Yes. And I really, because I really believe a lot in Europe. And I'm so happy and, uh, that Europe, uh, also thanks to COVID, I think, gets stronger. So um, one of the main points of Europe uh, is really to keep the diversity, but at the same time to have uh, like one direction. To unite. Yeah. Yes, united, um, unify, I think, all the um, particular interest, because uh, really I believe that we cannot go anywhere if we go in a chaotic uh, developing. 
but we have to keep our diversity. The challenge of this project, it will be really to combine the two faces of the moon, mm -hmm. like how to preserve our diversity, but at the same time to underline the importance of to follow all together Saedno, Nabulgaski. Saedno. Mm -hmm. One good direction for everybody. You just mentioned uh, collaborative work. That's a thing that you're very interested in, mm -hmm. actually. So um, I really would love to mention Belke as mm -hmm. a project that you created together with Martian Tabakov and with uh, Martin Penev, who I recently did an interview with. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell Mila us? Mila also. Mila also, yeah. Uh, Mila Andrew, Tabakova, Andrew and, Anderson. Yeah, the, the whole Kake band. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I wanted to, to say a little bit more about Belke because for me Belke represents very good the spirit that Sofia has and you as a foreigner who just came here and sensed this, mm -hmm. um, you would be able maybe to describe it better than us people who grew up here and mm -hmm. take it for granted sometimes. <laughs> it's true that Belke is a very particular project. Honestly, at the beginning, we met all together, we start to work all together in the same space uh, with any purpose. You know, it was uh, just, uh, uh, we felt comfortable all together. So since uh, four years, we are there. And uh, the particular things of Belka is exactly that, the multidisciplinary of uh, action that happened inside. As you mentioned, of course, uh, Kake group is a music, music group, yes. so they develop really that inside the space. Together with the sculpture that you Together with the sculpture, yeah. exactly, because Martian Tabaco is also is a very, yes. very talented sculpture. But at the same time, for example, there was Mila. Mila is uh, Mila Tabakova, who is uh, one of the most interesting... Uh, Illustrator, actually. Exactly, yeah. of book. So really, what I love of the space is this uh, uh, multidisciplinary that uh, teach me a lot, mm -hmm. really. And I hope that it will stay for a long, long time. I also hope that you're going to stay for at least a while more. <laughs> I will stay. <laughs> Va bene, I think we have it. Ma Thank merci. you, Valentina. <laughs> <laughs>